Let's learn about Nash equilibrium with a real life example. We have Meta or Facebook as a company who has two choices in front of it. And we have Nvidia who's really good at building high performing chips. And they also have two choices in front of them. Choice C and choice D. Meta has choice A and choice B. So Meta realizes that to power its boom of AI, it needs heavy computation. And so it needs NVIDIA's chips. And so it's wondering whether it should continue to use NVIDIA's chips to power all of the AI algorithms that they have, or should they invest more and more and build their own chip for powering their data centers and their computer algorithms. So that's the two choices in front of Meta. Continue to use NVIDIA and their chips, and or alternatively, choice B, build your own chips so that you are not relying on NVIDIA's high prices. NVIDIA also has two choices. Given they have a superior product today that no one is close, continue to keep high prices for those chips or lower the chip price so as to deter competition or new entrants. So NVIDIA has two choices, choice C, choice D, and similarly, Meta has choice A and choice B to choose from. So this is a very simplistic example of a real life situation. Meta has started investing in chips, I think for a few years now. But in any ways, assume this to be an example, yeah? Meta needs to choose whether to do A or B, NVIDIA, C or D. The payoff, meaning what does NVIDIA think is the benefit it will get is highlighted in orange color. So everything NVIDIA is orange, everything Meta is blue. So this two by two cell covers the payoffs. If Meta chooses choice A and NVIDIA chooses to keep the price high and then the payoffs for each of them would be in this, in this distribution. So NVIDIA would get 11, let's say a billion dollars incremental Meta gets $11 billion incremental if they continue to you know, use NVIDIA's chips but not invest in a major factory, right? So a payoff is basically what is the benefit for this specific choice pair. So in this case, it's Meta's choice A and NVIDIA's choice C. What's the payoff? So now we have payoffs for each of these four choices. Once we have these choices, we can start to find out if there is a strategy or if there is a strategy that works for everyone that is a dominant strategy for one but not a dominant strategy for another one or if there is an equilibrium, a Nash equilibrium. So let's look through this. How would we solve given this payoffs? Again, this assumes that you have this payoffs and these payoffs could be completely wrong. But assume that this is the work that NVIDIA's engineers decided uh, and the leadership and engineer and the media decided that, hey, this is, this is the benefit they will get uh, for each of these four choices. And likewise, Meta did the same. So now they both are thinking at the same time what they should do. And they're constantly going to evaluate those choices and keep iterating their decisions. But let's say now they, are, they have this payoff metrics in front of them. And media knows about only their payoffs metrics, payoffs uh, numbers. Meta only knows about their numbers, right? But they would all estimate each other's numbers as well. So they would have a two by two of some sorts. So now assuming NVIDIA is trying to make a decision, how would NVIDIA know what to do? Choice C or choice D? So the way NVIDIA would make a choice between C and D is NVIDIA would first assume, okay, let's assume NVIDIA's leadership would say, let's assume Meta is gonna go with choice A. Yeah, they're just gonna say, hey, so basically now we're thinking from NVIDIA's perspective. NVIDIA's leadership is trying to make a decision. So the way they will make a decision between C and D as to which one is better, is they would just, they would just assume. Assume that Meta goes with choice A, then they would compare the payoffs. Okay, Meta's gonna go with choice A, so I'm gonna assume this to be true. Then they're gonna say, oh, I will get a much better payoff, 13, then 11. So they would say, hey, this is choice D is better in this situation. Similarly, NVIDIA's leadership will continue to say, hey, 
I assumed choice A and I got this option. What if Mera did go with choice B? So then they would say, assume this to be true, then they'll compare the payoffs here. Oh, I'm getting a much better payoff again with going with choice D if Meta is going to go down this path. So what happened here? NVIDIA has a clear call. It's like, independent of what Meta does, I'm going to go with choice D, which is to reduce my prices. Yeah? So NVIDIA did this calculation. Similarly, Facebook people are going to do their own calculation. And they're going to be like, okay, now I'm going to decide whether I'll go with choice A or choice B. Same thing. So now the perspective is of that of a meta leadership. So the meta leadership is going to decide. And they're going to then assume, okay, assume that NVIDIA goes with choice C. If NVIDIA goes with choice C, they're going to compare the R payoffs. They're going to say, oh, 11 versus 12. I'm going to go with better payoff, right? So they, they will decide they'll go with choice B. Similarly, then they'll assume, okay, no, what if NVIDIA decides choice D? Because they don't know each of their choices, right? What? If NVIDIA decides choice D, then they're going to compare their payoffs and say, oh, 3 versus 4, I'm going to go with this. So, Meta also, in this case, has a dominant strategy. It's going to be like, I'm going to go with B no matter what NVIDIA decides. If it's choice C, I'm going to go with B. If it's choice D, I'm going to go with B. So you see, both of them have a dominant strategy, meaning they should, they should, NVIDIA should always pick choice D, and Meta should always pick choice B. Correct? So that's, that's what it means to have a dominant strategy. Yeah? Meaning each of them have one choice, independent of the other people, other, other parties' choice. So when we now have this overlap, where NVIDIA is always going to go with D, and Meta is always going to go with B, and we see both of these um, choices coinciding, meaning we have a cell with both dominant strategies or both um, payoffs much better for this company, we have an equilibrium. So they will always go with this and they will always land here. Meaning, there is no incentive for them to change their decision. Meaning, NVIDIA will always go with D, Meta will always go with B because there is an equilibrium. You see, both of these circles are you know, we did circles on both of them, yeah? So, we see here that NVIDIA and Meta have an equilibrium. This is called the Nash equilibrium. Why do we have to learn, learn about this? This helps us to understand if there is a strategy or an outcome at which makes it very hard for these players to make a decision change then that's the equilibrium, meaning they will not change their decision once they have uh, arrived at this outcome. So this is optimum decision for them. And that gives them the best payoffs. So this is Nash equilibrium. This Nash equilibrium, see what the payoffs is. NVIDIA got eight payoff, and Meta got four payoff, yeah? Look at this cell. They both could have gotten much higher payoff, right? And they both would have preferred to be in this cell. So when this kind of a situation happens, when they both have an equilibrium decision, the dominant decision that they would that overlaps for both of them, it doesn't have to be dominant, but if it is an overlap, but they would have preferred to make this decision, then that's called prisoner's dilemma. Meaning they both would choose this and they cannot change their decision because it's an equilibrium decision even though they know they could both be making much higher payoffs and it's a win-win. So for this, you can't, you can't collude. You cannot like share that, hey, we both would win-win if we, you know, just, you don't do this, you, you know, you use my chips, I keep charging you high and we both have a better payoff. Because that would be collusion. But you see, that's an example. This, this Nash equilibrium is also the same example of prisoner's dilemma when this kind of a situation happens. This, is not, this would not be a prisoner's dilemma if, let's say, I would have changed this from payoffs of 3 and, let's say, 1. 
right? Or some something lower, right? Something lower than this, then you know maybe you wouldn't have even arrived at this dilemma, but you get the point, yeah? So that's Nash equilibrium at a high level. One example, and we get uh, how do we arrive at this uh, prisoner's dilemma version of Nash equilibrium. 